and I am not going to uh, rig this up. I'm going to do this one properly. So there's no halfway here, no temporary. I'm doing this up right. I'm not going to be undoing my wiring again once I'm done. Hey Troy, check out the t-shirt man. Bought this before you and I stopped talking because of all the ridiculousness. You need to actually, well, you need to come up with your own heading, your own direction, and tell the peanut crowd to mind their own business. Because it's you that going to have to put up with it, but you keep starting all these projects and never finish them, really. All right. On this last clip I just put up, you mentioned that you didn't connect well, you mentioned that you're going to connect the 6-volt batteries up properly, right? May I deduce from this commentary that you had that you didn't connect the other batteries up properly? Namely, your old forklift batteries? Could that possibly be, possibly be part of the problem you had? Would that be a fair evaluation? Hmm? I think so. All right, so when I put that on, it's probably going to spark a lot because the power inverters capacitors have massive, or make a massive surge. I hate doing that. I really hate connecting them. For the spark. Oh, I dread that part. I always dread that. Snap! Oh, I hate that. It makes me jump every time. You probably didn't see it because the uh, I was blocking with my arm. Boy, I hate that. Those inverters, it's off. Those inverters snap when you collect them. Yeah, try that spark that you keep getting every time you try to check, uh, turn on the um, uh, power inverter is the capacitor is charging from a discharge state. It happens because there's a bleeder capacitor in there to bleed it down over time and well at least there should be one. I don't know if you, yours has one but it should be one. And that's what's causing the spark because it's charging up the voltage, you know, that counteracts, you know, sag and uh, current flow when you get a <coughs> demand. Sorry, I still got out of here. But, um, yeah, Troy, that's what's causing it. Now, let me explain something to you. All right, I know you never, <coughs> you've never done this in your life. <coughs> and I'm sure you've probably never done it in your life. You have something called codes, right? New York State is really bad on codes. They got codes <coughs> for everything. Now, general electric code is this. You got your solar panels sitting way out in the boonies, right? <coughs> Ideally, somewhere, <coughs> sorry, when the wire comes from the panel, right before the charge controller, there should be a disconnect, right? However you do it. I mean, there's multiple ways to put a disconnect in, but a switch would be nice. Uh, is where you can switch it off either at the panel or you can switch it off at the charge controller, it doesn't matter. That way you can work on the panels without worrying about the charge controller. Right? That's a safety precaution. Should be there. Per code, it's got to be there. Now the power comes in from the solar panel after disconnect. And it goes into the charge controller. Right? The charge controller does its thing. It goes out and that's the end that goes to the battery. Well guess what, Troy? You're also supposed to have a disconnect there too. That way when you're working on it, charge control in this case, you can flip the switch into basically an off state, not disconnected, and you can work on the charge controller or you can work on the batteries depending on what you're doing. Right? Anyhow, the cable goes from the, the disconnect switch from there, goes from the cable, goes out to the batteries, and charges your batteries. Now you have another set of cables that come back in and this is your, your load, going to your load, right? 
Now this is also supposed to go to a disconnect switch. This is also for safety reasons. This is to keep people like you from getting hurt. Because now we're talking about a good chunk of current. Well, it's a good chunk of current going out to the batteries, you know, the other way, but you're, you're really talking about a good chunk of current coming back in from the batteries going to your load. Uh, you're supposed to have a disconnect switch. That's a safety thing. It keeps people like you from getting hurt. Now, if you had a disconnect switch, your capacitors wouldn't go, I mean, your battery wouldn't make that little pop and stuff, right? You wouldn't get that little zap. Because when you connected it, it couldn't go anywhere because there's a switch in the off state. But once you flip that switch, then you have a safe conduction of power going from the batteries through the disconnect switch into your load. Right? And your explanation on your wiring coming off the uh, power inverter wasn't exactly clear. Uh, I know one person gave them the false impression you're running six gauge wire from the batteries going into the charge controller, which would be too bloody low. Uh, I was actually going to tell you it needs to be at least four gauge wire, not six. But since you're running uh, double on, I think is what you said it was. I don't know, I'll take your word on it. Going from the batteries coming in, going to the charge controller, and then strapping on another set of wires, which is six gauge to power your DC uh, apparatus, which is really where I think a drain is, bub. Uh, going into your DC apparatus to power your whatevers, right? That's okay. I can't think of any code reason, although I think it's supposed to go through a power distribution point and then divide from power distribution point out, code-wise. And that's it. I mean, you're broken code. I mean, if anybody really, really, really wanted to go after you, I'd get you for fire. I'd get a fire inspector out there and they could probably shut you down for a while. You have to move out until you got all that stuff corrected. Good luck on that. I know a bunch of people want to see you down. To me, if not you, it'll be Elvis. So whatever. It's always somebody. So to me, I just don't care. At least not that far. There's always somebody. And if not Elvis, somebody would replace you. And there'd be another person to fight. That's the reason I don't do a cult anymore, Troy. I stopped fighting the cults for one reason. There's always another to take their place. It's just an endless, endless battle. So, I just point out the stupidity and move on. Well, i talk to you later, Troy. I gotta talk to somebody else that uh, my beloved saw commenting about my forklift battery comment as far as the um, morning star not being designed for it. Easy argument, can win, not a problem. Talk to you later, Troy. I'll be back in a second. We're gonna discuss configuration switches. Shalom, Troy. Okay, boys and girls, we're gonna talk about programming the TriStar MPPT charge controller. I'm on page 18. Let's go to the top and make the proof. This is for the TriStar MPPT charge controller. If you notice, with the exception that Troy has a little indicator panel here, which is optional, this is the same thing Troy has. So it is the same device. Back down to page 18. Fighting with the mouse. Okay, here we go. Switch configurations. All right, let me get a center on the screen. All right, we have switch one. Now, Troy's doing solar, so the switch should be in off condition. There's also a future option, which is on, which I never think was ever done. Down here, you have voltage, right? 
Detroit runs full of balls. For him, switch two should be off, switch three should be on. Scrolling down. Now we have the battery charging settings. Alright. Alright. We have gel. Forklift is not a gel. We have two different seals. Forklift is not a seal. We have AGM flooded. Could be not. We also have two other flooded. I know Troy tried them. They didn't work. I think he kept getting alarms, if I remember right. We have L16. That's a 6 volt battery, boys and girls. Uh, even though you need two of them to make 12 volts. Uh, a forklift is not an L16. You have number 8, which is custom. I did try to get to Troy to use it. Troy refused to use it. Didn't really say why. Don't know why. He didn't want to use it, right? He could have programmed in, theoretically, if it allowed it, the proper settings for the following. Let me go down to it. Right here. For each battery type, you need to program in the absorption voltage or stage, the flooded stage or voltage, the equalization stage or voltage, and the equalization interval. Now, the absorption is more of a rapid charge to get it up to a given point. So, is a little bit more. Uh, it's mostly just really the top and off. Equalization is used to get all the cells within a given battery to function at an equal voltage. And equalization interval is how many days in between it is done. Moving on. Equal battery equalization settings. Now, here you have switch 7. You can either set it off, which is manual, and you just do it when you want it to do it. Or you have auto, which is switch 7 on. Then you have internet, uh, excuse me, ethernet security, because I'm looking through the screen and the camera, I can't see. Now, you can set this off, or you can set this on. This is if you're going to be using Ethernet to it, which I know Troy does, so it's probably in an on state. And that is it, boys and girls. There is no more settings, no more changes. And I can go through this again, but I don't remember seeing anything in custom settings. I think you're supposed to be able to do it through a web page. I don't know. I don't own this thing. I just go by what's in the manual. And this is what the manual is. So this given charge controller is designed for automotive style batteries. Because that's the chart that's programmed into it, boys and girls. You've got to fill in those four values with something. And that's what the charge controller uses in order to interact with a given battery in a given way and as it says right here, hang on, switching hands. Refer to the specifications provided by the battery manufacturer and choose the settings that best fit the recommended charge profile, our charging profile. So you have very little flexibility with this for a forklift. I'm not saying it's not possible, it might be. But you can also damage the battery over time, which means your battery manufacturer will void your warranty. And that's my point. Any further comments, please feel free to add. And until then, take care and shalom. And this AP was going to kill me before it's over with. One addendum I didn't put into the initial uh, beginning. Um, Let's take a poll, this t-shirt. Now, I got this from Troy when him and I were on good terms. I wear it sometimes, very rarely. Uh, I think I wore it to pick up Sam at the airport. <laughs> and I got a reaction for that. And uh, I wore it today. And I think I've worn it a couple other times, but very rarely. Now, here's the poll. 
Now, Sam wants to have a burn the t-shirt contest. Or not contest, but a burn the t-shirt um, thing. So, let's do a poll. How many of you guys, and I know there's a bunch of anti-Troys that come here. How many of you guys think I should burn this shirt, record it maybe, and put it up? Well, if you agree, just put a yay or nay at the, in the comments. Whatever wins, that's what we'll do. Hey, it's just a t-shirt. Well, let me know. Put the comment from the below. I know what Sam's answer is. Burn it. Um, and we'll summarize that in the next, say, two weeks. And then we'll do a video burn the uh, off-grid t-shirt or not. You guys take care. Be blessed. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Shalom.